All right, so um, time being um, 2.37, I'll call the 2 o'clock meeting to order and um, recognize um, um, those. We have two members of the subcommittee. My name is Mark McConkie, uh, chair of this subcommittee. Um, seated to my left is Chairman Avalani of the Carroll County Delegation. Representative Jonathan Smith is on the other side. Uh, Representative Burroughs and Representative uh, Marsh were unable to attend. And we are joined. This is the Mount Washington Valley um, Mountain, View Mountain Valley Mountain View Community uh, meeting. And pull this back. We are, we are joined by the Administrator, Deidre Brown, and Financial Director, Paula Coates. Okay. Uh, first order of uh, business is uh, minutes were distributed dated February 18, 2022. Um, summarizing our, our first meeting of the subcommittee. Um, We've had a chance to review. Is there a motion to accept with corrections, additions, or anything I'll, else? I'll make a motion to accept as drafted. Okay. Second. All right. Motion made and uh, seconded in favor of uh, the minutes as presented without corrections. February 18th signified by saying aye. 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 The uh, motion carries unanimous. All right. Um, Paula was kind enough to compile um, for us um, the revised, uh, the budget as we know it at this time. Is that right, Paul? Yeah. Okay. So last time we were meeting, we were back and forth between a couple documents, so this should go better. Um, I believe our charge to come back this meeting uh, was to talk about possible changes, revisions to what we have here. Uh, we had a discussion uh, uh, with uh, both the finance director and the administrator. And if I remember correct, Deidre, we were going to discuss some areas that we might, some positions that we uh, may not be filling with the cravat that if we start talking about these and we remove some of these positions at this time because we don't know that they're going to be filled um, and they become necessary in the future that we don't, while we don't strap a future delegation to our expenditures, uh, but those things may come back at another time. So. With that, do you want to take us through where you see possible adjustments, please? Certainly, I would be happy to. I don't know if you have the handout that I um, had made up, and if I could take a moment, I'd like to read it, if I may. Please do. Uh, this is uh, for budget considerations for Mountain View community. Uh, the COVID pandemic has significantly impacted nursing home operations across the country and the world. Given a worldwide nursing shortage and CMS COVID vaccine mandates, preparing, anticipating, and adjusting for the current conditions is a major challenge. The last two years, expenses and revenues have fluctuated drastically, leaving us with a less than clear and accurate financial picture from which to draw from. We have seen rising costs in many areas such as retirement, health insurance, fuel, food costs, supplies, and much more. Staffing is at a critical level, and though, although our census remains stable, the cost to get adequate staff to safely care for our residents requires us to utilize all available resources to maintain staffing necessary to run the facility. Given these unprecedented times, I have reviewed budgets and discussed research and considered every line item. Since my hire as an administrator, I have been developing cost saving and revenue generating options to initiate. First off, we have raised the private pay rate from $340 to $380 per day. In 2021, we had 8,932 private bed days. Given that increased based on these numbers, we would have increased revenue by approximately $357,000. Rates for our nursing home care, this is number two, is based off the acuity of the residents we serve. Increasing the complexity and acuity of resident care would drive our daily rate up. 
The caution to this is that acuity is tied to the amount of care required. The more complex cases require more nursing hours and more medications. Currently, we are looking at training staff to capture elements of care that increase acuity and ultimately uh, rate, rates. Number three, a recent discussion between Health Pro Heritage, our OTPT provider, and myself uh, centered around options or opportunities to provide community services as an outpatient provider to PT at Mountain View Community. Due to COVID restrictions, we will have to, be, have to hold on further discussions. Mountain View Community in Carroll County would see cost savings if we had a centralized purchasing department. Currently, we each operate as a small business and receive the slim benefit of a small business versus working together to maximize our purchasing power. Office supplies, general supplies, food, and other department line items that could be coordinated through a central supply. Mountain View Community has discussed and prepared to implement a process of going to generic branding over to, of over-the-counter medications as opposed to name brand items. This conversion would realize a savings for 50 to 80 percent off those over-the-counter medications. An example, gener generic Tylenol versus uh, name brand Johnson & Johnson Tylenol, 100 per bottle. The generic is $1.48 a bottle, while the regular Tylenol is $10.06. I think that gives you a little bit of a snapshot of some of the challenges that we're facing right now. And I think um, it is even more complex. I don't know if you saw that the president's preparing to speak uh, on behalf of a new initiative that was uh, the fact sheet came out last night. And it's indicating now that they will be um, looking to add minimum staffing patterns in all nursing homes. So that would require us to meet a minimum level, um, which then places another additional burden on ensuring that we have the staffing. Um, so this is something that just came out. I believe he's speaking today. Um, we will watch it and see. Um, but it's difficult times right now. And it's very hard to, to anticipate what's going to happen next. I've tried to offer you what I can offer you without compromising our direct care staff. I feel it's imperative right now that we keep those positions where they are. And that although we've discussed possibly adding them back in at a later date if necessary, I believe that there are two issues. One is that we are actively trying to create ways to get staffing in right now. And we're hoping to do that. We're creating some job fairs. We have some things working with HR on doing such. And um, that would help us fill those vacant positions. The other part of it is uh, that although the position may be vac vacant, we have to use that per diems or other sources of staffing that then offset in those line items. So if we have a per diem, that would go into the, the vacant line item and be charged to it. So with that being said, on the second page I offered what I feel is something that we can do where we will cut back on our expenses, increase our revenue, and work on some of these things I spoke on the first front page, which will do both. Um, on the second page, I had indicated that I'm looking at uh, proposing some cuts in our supply line item, 51, 40, 39, reducing by 25,000. That's a large amount of money, but A, we haven't spent it in the last couple of years. It seems as though we had, we had over 30,000 still to date. Um, available and some of the things that we're going to be doing such as our over-the-counter meds and things like that will save us even more so I feel comfortable with that number. Uh, overtime in 5150, uh, 05 um, reducing by 3,000. Travel a mere 100 reduced there but I figured I could offer that. Um, supplies another reduction by $1,000 and then two positions that I feel are important that I can offer is one is I will I will uh, give up this 16 hour position that is an administrative position. It was actually used for us to have a staffing on the weekend at our front desk. I feel confident we can address that without that position and that way free up that financial uh, amount there. Um, the second one is, uh, as you know, we have um, a maintenance director at uh, Mountain View and then our, that same maintenance director is also a county maintenance director. And at the time, we have been absorbing the entire cost of the salary, despite him working in two locations. So my recommendation is that we reallocate that money for his position at an 80-20 split, where he's 80% for Mountain View and 20 for the county. And that would show us um, 
our ability to lessen our expenses by $22,000. So what I've been able to present is a reduction in budget by $67,885 and ensuring that I'm still indicating that we should see a revenue increase based on the private pay uh, increase to bed, which could roughly be around $300,000 annually. If, uh, if I could, then I'll open it up. Absolutely. So let's go back to the relocation portion of the maintenance director sure. and the 80-20 split. So it, it, will, it will save your department, uh, but that cost then goes back to whom? That would go back to either the administrator, the county admin, or it would go into the county maintenance budget. I don't know what, what is there a line item for 41. County facility? Yes. Yeah, I think that's 4198, right, Melissa? Um, is that what it is? I believe. I believe. So it's, uh, <coughs> it's not a savings. It's, it's not, not, really a, a, savings. It's not a savings. Yes, 4198. For the facilities. Or into 4170, the admin building. Thank you. Okay. Um, and just as a last note, the, the kind of pie chart that I did is to show just what our increases are looking like um, for this budget for 2022. And you see the majority of that are the reallocation of items from the county budget into Mountain View. So that was a huge chunk of money that we have now put into our budget. Um, as well as, um, obviously, you see our salary portions that were approved by CBA and by the commissioners, and then our slice is in red of what our increases were for our budget. Um, there is a slight one that you can't really see because it's so small, the 9,000, which is like PT and OT, things that are tied to um, revenue as well. But it's just a snapshot just to kind of get an accurate picture. Um, um, page 20. Sure. I've highlighted a couple of areas that probably need some clarification. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I might. Please. Um, for the benefit of Commissioner Platt, she does not have that thick packet that you're referring to, but he does have the budget documents. If you might say, say the account numbers. Or sure. Something. Thank you. Um, Is the Commissioner on? I know he was earlier, but I don't see him on now. But we will identify. Okay. Okay, please uh, continue. Um, there seems to be quite a bit of attendance gift cards purchased on a business card. Could you explain what those are for? Yes. Um, when I first came on board, um, there was a recognition of a perfect attendance that was given out and had been given out uh, for quite some time that at the end of, I think it was monthly, they would get a gift card um, as a incentive for perfect attendance. Um, we have since somewhat disbanded that for a couple of different reasons. Um, one is not being able to purchase gift cards for our staff is um, a law and so we have changed that and also um, looking at to not necessarily do it in that type of a time span and recognizing a monthly perfect attendance. It is in the CBA agreement though. What, give, giving up gift cards? The bonus, the perfect mm -hmm. attendance. The so whether it's a gift card or something else, there's, it is we in, have yeah. to. Okay. Well, you, go right ahead. Thank you, because usually when you hand out a gift card, it's not captured on there. Um, employment, it should be done in a stipend and captured on their exactly employment. Because right. it would be. Um, I'm glad you stopped it. Yes. Thank you. Well, making an adjustment to how it is allocated and, and tracked. Thank you. So we're not going to need that money in your operating supplies, right? Right there was two two thousand dollars or so. Yeah, it, it, you're right. Except for right now, we still have it in the CBA. So until such a time that it's not in there, we would have to do some sort of a uh, acknowledgement of attendance. 
you could uh, reallocate it to um, salaries, because that's where it should be. Paul? We didn't ask to increase, um, and I know like you're seeing it's overspent. We're still only asking for 80, but we are opening up the cafe to families and county nursing home employees. So I don't know that we could go back down to under the 80 that we're asking for. I know it says we spent 82, but we're only asking for 80 in the 2022 budget. We're not asking for an increase from last year. Okay. There's other stuff in here that probably shouldn't be in here. If it's general operating supplies. Um, uniform shoes shouldn't be in there. Uniform um, shirts shouldn't be in there. They should be under uniforms. There's a, a number of items stuck in there under business card for uniforms. They should be under the uniform. Then we'd have to increase the uniform line because I know they would overspend that. Like, all those were put back from the uniform line, the uniform line would be over. I mean, I can move them, but it's going to be a lateral and there's not going to be any savings, I guess, is well, I think the, the point is you just want them in the right place, isn't it, Representative? That, that would be correct, so we can actually budget correctly. Okay. So we can, we you, could increase our... You got quite a bit in there. Fine, but like I said, I'd hate to decrease from the 80000 because we are going to start trying to open up the cafe, I think, next week. So, oh. seven. I'm not looking to seven. reduce that number. Okay. I'm looking to make sure that it, the, the uh, items that are in here are allocated Thank properly. You. Yeah, that's why I enjoy these well, that's why I so the much. Details. I mean, I mean, we're not looking to nickel and dime a few dollars here, a few dollars there. We just want to make sure that it's allocated correctly and if an adjustment needs to be made in one department to another department, that should be fine, especially for a, a certain employee that might be related to somebody at this table. Takes me out. Right, so shoes. I know, but I'm so confused. <laughs> is, is that representative? Is that is, so? If I follow on, I'm on page 21. There, it's all of those references for shoes for crews. That would be correct. Yes. Okay. I mean, that, shoes for crews, uniforms, supply. I mean, on the business card. Yes, a lot of it's under business card, which is concerning because it should be like everybody else. If everybody's ordering shoes from, you know, shoes for crews across other departments. Maybe we can get a corporate account and get a better discount if we order 50 pairs instead of everybody ordering five across the board here and there. Well, I know Chris orders them. We order them from the right. I mean, I'm sure we have an account there is what I guess. Yeah, I'm but I don't know if the, GA, the GL uses them oh, or okay. the sheriff uses see, them yep. use people yep. or anybody else. I'm sure Bob must use them. I don't think. Guys. No, because they're supply. I think they supply their own shoes because they're supplied uniforms. Bob, Bob buys them their uniform clothes, but they. Yeah. So, so if that number needs to go up and this number needs to go down, I mean, we should do that. Well, somebody should make that adjustment. Well, like I said, I don't want to bring it down under the eighty thousand, though. I mean, well, no. If we take out all this uniform and we allocate it over to where it needs to go, I mean, it's it's a it's a net. It's not going to be a loss. While you're looking for your next one, Representative, can you explain to me why there is so much business cards? Because um, we do order a lot of items through Amazon or other suppliers, and that's we use the business card for that. So when Seth makes a purchase, okay, he'll use the okay. business card for that. Chairman? Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes. I just want to go back to your letter um, about raising the private pay. Yes. Just to refresh my mind, private pay is someone that's physically paying on their own, not using Medicare. Correct. And raising that number to 380 is not going to put you out of the competitive nursing home rates. That's going to be Absolutely not. Before that yeah. amount was um, raised, um, there was conversation with the commissioners as well as some research and co communication with other facilities of what their private pay rates were and to ensure that we didn't do anything that put us out of that market. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, Commissioner? Well, I, I think that rate hadn't been raised in about 
five years? Is that right? I think since 2016, I'm, I believe that was the last time that it was raised. Well, six years. So, yeah, okay. it's been a while. Yeah. And so I think even with that raise, we're probably below market, but we didn't want to do a huge increase all at once. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and perhaps it's in here, and and. Um, how many how many unfilled positions do you have, whether it be administration, nursing, or contract union? We had talked about last time that there was probably going to be some positions. I, I agree with you in that regard. However, looking at the, the situation that we're in, and I don't know how familiar you are with some of the other county homes and what they're sh sh dealing with right at this time, but there's a couple of them that are in pretty dire straits. And one of the things that um, I've seen or have interpreted from, the, from those counties is that they have been so short in staff that they've caught themselves in a wheel where they've reduced their census and then they've reduced their staffing. And it would be near impossible for those facilities or facilities like that then to, re, to recover from it because you have to then get a huge chunk of staff back in and then increase your census. But while you're trying to do that, you're not bringing the revenue in. And it's, it's kind of that double-edged sword. You want to reduce things on one side and it's going to come back on the other side. So. My good conscience at this time period with the pandemic and after giving a great deal of thought and really looking and researching and seeing where we're at, our nursing staffing has never been shorter than it is right now. We're in some pretty tough situations. We just suspended admitting anymore, but we're at 100, so we're, we're very lucky. We have a 97% um, you know, occupancy rate. My concern is that we won't get the staffing back in, and I do not feel comfortable compromising in any way our care and safety of our residents. We're known for our care and for everything there. I do not want to compromise it. And I'm concerned that if we do eliminate some positions, we could end up in that same situation. That's my concern. Can I just to piggyback off of your question? Your question was pertaining to unfilled positions, correct? Not eliminating positions. Just to clarify. And it was, and if they appear to be unfilled for the first three or four months, what's what's the issue with removing that? I guess your position, if I understand this correctly. Um, your position would be if we leave the funds available, it will show as a surplus at the end of the year? Is that your position? Well, we're also having to use those vacant positions to pay for the per diems and the overtime and things that we have to, to cover the vacant positions that we have. And so eliminating them are also taking out our resources to get us through that period of time. Uh, the other thing that is very concerning to me is that if we do anything like suspending uh, the positions, as you, you both all had said, is that there's no guarantee of what could happen down the road, and I just would not feel comfortable putting ourselves in a situation where we may not be able to recover, and that's my first priority. So when I looked at it and I looked at some of the, the positions that we had, I did not feel comfortable eliminating any of them because we need each and every position, and whether they be filled at this point, if we have a a job fair next week, can we fill 
three? Can we fill ten? Can we fill seven? Um, I don't know that. And I'm very concerned that I don't want to ever leave us in a position where we can't staff our facility. And I asked earlier, Paul, is it too hard to identify how many unfilled positions we have? And you want to provide that at another time? Nope. I actually did. Lena, did you get those papers I sent you? The email? No? Okay. Um, <laughs> So, Lena would ask because I did email those. I had a little trouble because I think I had the wrong email address. I don't know if we have fixed straighten that out, but Melissa had um, emailed you, so I attached it was attached to that one. But anyway, so Dietary had um, had a couple vacant positions, and also so they have two, 140 and 116 hour position that they had had vacant at the time. Nursing, nursing is kind of hard to give you a vacant. It might say vacant. But we have per diems that are filling in for those vacants. So they're technically not vacant. We're using that money. We're just using them on per diems. So to cut anything there would really, I mean, we really can't. Even though they say vacant, they only say vacant because it's not a full-time personnel. Sure. Um, so that's nursing. There's quite a few in there. But and then, let's see, I think One in recreation. One in recreation. Maintenance has. I think they have one. one. They have one in maintenance, which he's definitely filling. I think he's got some people coming in. One in rec, and that's it. Everybody else, and one in the admin. Right, which is the one I put in. And how many people do we have for recreation? There's nine full time and one part-time. And our one position that's unfilled is a part-time or full-time? It's a 32-hour position. 32. And your maintenance has has one? One. Is that a part-time? Full-time. That's a full-time. And again, they've also used during, I know housekeeping and maintenance has one, one budget. They've had a lot of people in and out being sick off and on, so they've had extra people picking up extra shifts. So I'm assuming that's going to end up, some of that money is going to have to go back into overtime at some point maybe. If, if, the, you know, if it continues to have people out because of COVID or anything else, then we're going to use up one of We have, so for the, for the past year's time, we've been, our, our bed count, did you tell me that we're, we're average, what's our average been over that time? Ballpark. Probably like 97. I would okay. say that would be probably well, very fair between 96 and 98 percent. Yeah. Okay. And and that's a major accomplishment given all the challenges right now with COVID and such. But sure. No, that's it. Speaking. Excuse me. Uh, one of the things about um, the positions as well in the middle of COVID too, there's so many requirements upon our staff that if you have a headache or a fever, you have to be out until that's done in 24 hours after. We have had to do so many different things with people filling in just because of that fact. We've had people who have gone out for COVID and had to be out. Anyone with close contact has been put out. So even our staffing that's been there, if they've been exposed to COVID, we're required to keep them out of work. And that's put a, an additional burden even on our already you know, strained staff. So we've had to fill in with part-timers and, you know, per diems just to cover for some of those days. Okay. Let's go back to the first one. Um, with dietary, was it? Yes. yes. Now, is, explain to me the function of dietary. Uh, just briefly, these, these dietary is not taking into account people working on the food service side, is it? Is that what dietary is? all of is? the food service, the whole process. So it's from front to prep to dishwashers okay. to everything. So for the past year's time, we've been not supplying anywhere near our count of uh, our revenue out of out of there. Right. Correct. And you're talking about bringing back some service. What? Tell me what percentage you're going to ramp back up to. Um. I mean, we got a lot from over here. I mean, I know every day the attorney's office used to come over. There was probably six, seven of those them that came over. We had the sheriff's department come over. I'm sure the girls in the finance office would love to come over. Um, the deeds always came over. 
So, and then we're going to actually do families too. So, right. I mean, and the jury lunches, on, if the juries are. Yeah, I don't think we're doing jury so yeah. yeah. you, What's what's your not counting the administrator in charge of that? How many people are in that department? Sixteen full time. Fourteen part time, and the part time are mostly mostly kids after school kids that work the four to eight shift. Okay. The bulk. Of and them. the the two positions you are down. Mm -hmm. You told me those were were those part time. One's a full time and one's a part time. <clears throat> Okay, nursing probably shouldn't be touched. No. Correct. Uh, recreation, you have one position full time. Yes. And your maintenance is down one person, one. and you understand that that is going to be a filled position? I believe Bob. Yes. Yeah, Bob definitely yes. has to fill his position. And he's been active. He's been active. Yeah. Yeah, we have to go here. Move on for now. Move on for now. I know, I know what we want to do. All right. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, let's let yes represent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can we move to page 44, 45? Certainly can. Can I just? Yes. 46 comment and 47. So the, the uniforms, I just want to look at, have you look at the uniform line? Mm -hmm. Because I know you want to pull that money out of there and put it. So I added I don't, up. I don't want to do anything. Well, right. I so if I added up everything that was in shoes or uniforms in supplies, it came to 2100 mm -hmm. So I know we have uniform expenses budget at 5500 mm -hmm. But if you look at the first half of the year, how much the chef coats and the terry cloths, they were four or $500 mm -hmm. every month. And if you look down the bottom, we've decreased that to about 70 or $80 a month. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that we'll have to add any in. I think we can just... Well, I was going to ask, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, is it your chef coats come in on a, through the uniform company, right? Uniforms, yeah. You, you don't purchase them outright and then give them to your employees? No, he, I believe he just has them cleaning the service. So 44. Yes, please, let's go. Thank you. 44, 45, 46, and 47. And supplies. Yep. Supplies. Yeah. I've highlighted a few areas on my page. Um, we, th th that there was attendance gift cards in there again. Quite a few. There we go, between, because the That's attendance good. cards are for everybody, so when we get them, we charge off to depart some to each department. Correct. And on page 47, there was um, quite a purchase. It looked like it was July. Okay. Christmas in July. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, page, excuse me, page 47. 47. Thank you. Yep. Oh, Ellen, you Yep. At the top, you had you had attendance gift cards, L and A gift cards. You have an out 750 for appreciation week, which says gift card. I don't know what that is. Um, so. Um, yes, it was LNA, and the LNA gift cards were for LNA Appreciation Day. The gift card is we have, um, we had to buy some of them in cash, I believe. Mm -hmm. So we had to, we wrote a check out of our gift card account, bought what we needed to buy, buy, and then got reimbursed for that. But it was for LNA for LNA week. Where would I find the gift card account? Gift card account. It's next door. It's a totally separate, it's a donation account. So that's where all donations go. We have um, lines in there for some people donate for nursing. If people want to go to nursing school, they send in donations and it goes in a line in there. Some people donate for the residents, some people donate. We did, when we got the bus years ago, we did a bus fundraiser. We, it was in the gift card. So those kinds of things run through, run through the gift card. And who has oversight of that? Well, I can write the checks, Sasha. Lisa Thomas signed the checks, and then it goes it, we, the administrator, so we, she knows what's going and on. And Bonnie has it too. And Bonnie has it too now. So, 
So there's a multiple multiple eyes on that account. Yep. Yeah. Every month the um, reconciliation goes over with copies of any checks that were made out come over to the business office here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So just to be clear, so these these cards listed here, gift cards. The source of that funding is a donation to pay for those. Not all of them. I think we just did some out of here. And again, this is something we can't continue, obviously. So that would be, if we did l &A week again, it would be something added to their, their pay instead of a gift card. Okay. So in the beginning, um, when we were back in the earlier pages, talked about the gift cards were part of their contractual agreement. Yes. Is that what, what I understood? Yep. So, and mm -hmm. those gift cards, I think, are, are given differently than these gift cards, these L&As? Right. The, the other ones were for perfect attendance. Okay. These are for just a, appreciation for L&A. Okay, sounds good. I understand that. So, how many perfect attendance percentage-wise, and I know staffing, getting people, and everything else, 10%, 20%, 50%? I, I was going to say that. I, yeah, I, no I kind of came in with that when we were wrapping all that up and kind of putting that away. Um, I know they hand out quite a bit. It was a lot. I want to probably about 40, 40, 50 a month. So what is that out of 200? <clears throat> so that's. Mr. Chair? Yes. Commissioner. Uh, may, may I ask a question? Yes. So, uh, when the donations, who are they coming from? Who's giving those donations? To the gift card account? Yeah. What? It would have to be that. What do you mean? Who's giving what donations? I mean, when it would, are just people in the community giving donations? Would it be family members? Or, yes, family members. Yep, family members, past family members. I get there's a right. trust that donates every year to the Nursing Education Fund for anybody that wants to do that. So, yes, there is... It's family or past family. And does that go into a county government account? It goes into the gift card account, which is held at the nursing home. And that's owned by the county? Well, I would guess so. It's in the, yeah, it's in the county yeah. checkbook. Mr. Chairman, okay. can I just ask for clarification? Yes. Is it um, gift card or heart? Heart. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and don't ask me why it's called that. It always has been. It always has been. Always yes. Been. How long? And this process has been this way for a period of years, I would assume? Yes. Yes. Since I've been here. And those gift cards are not the ones being used for uh, performing the requirements under the union contract? No. These are for L&A Appreciation Week. Okay. What we're talking about now. Yes. Does that answer your question, Commissioner? It does. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a question for the commissioner? Yes, please. Uh, commissioner Platt, should be following up on that? I will be. Thank you. You know what? I, I, I hadn't been aware that it was being done that way. Okay. Page 80, Education and Conferences. I see a lot of business card activity. Can we just get clarification on some of those things? Gifts. So that was um, every year we buy Christmas gifts for the residents. So that was probably a purchase, a reimbursement for those. Because again, we have to. So what happens with the? Yeah, what, there's probably another one. What happens with the Christmas gifts at Christmas time? Again, I've, we put up a sign-up sheet for the employees to purchase. They sign off on a resident that they'd like to purchase Christmas gifts for. 
they're a lot of thirty dollars so we cut a check on a gift card for 103 residents times thirty dollars we put that in a box the staff go out and once they purchase their gift they bring us in the receipt we then reimburse them for that gift that they purchased well, why would it be under education and education and conferences I'd have to look at the receipt. Under recreation. Under recreation, yeah. Then it should be allocated to recreation something, right? Recreation they there. They have an operating supply line. They do. They could probably do that. They have a, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that should probably be allocated somewhere else. Page 82. 82, go ahead. Yeah. Um, we have a deduction for wine. They have happy hour. Nursing home for the residents. And the I guess my question is, is, that's all you spend in a year? <laughs> no, we do, they replenish as we, they obviously don't have much, but we have, we have other alcohol also, so would they replenish as needed, I would imagine. This was like, a, I think, a special thing that, that was like a, yeah. around, no well, I was going to say, there's one, day for or Valentine's. there's one for Hannaford for 76 happy hour beverages, so I'm yes. sure that had alcohol yeah. in it too. So they have like beer there's day. So they get a beer. Yeah, there's a few in there for wine and beer. That was based on activities. Um, if the residents want their own alcohol, then they purchase their own alcohol. I understand that. My mom used to. So. Sure. Page 83, staff meals paid through activity services and recreational, or is that for the staff that attends certain things? If the residents go out to lunch and the staff go with them, then obviously we pay for the staff meals, so that's what that would be for if they went out to a restaurant. Or... Okay, and then we have... At the bottom of that, on page 83, right in the middle, we have a business card for Christmas gifts, and then we also have another gift card in here again. Yep, so those would be, um, Seth may have purchased, I'd have to look at his business card receipt, but the gift card one is just reimbursing gift card for the gifts that were bought. So once, once all the staff have returned their receipts and given us the money for the check that I had written out a gift card, I staple all that together and I send it over here so that I can reimburse the gift card account for the resident Christmas. So, it's, it's so, as far, so from what I've gotten, I've gotten 800 almost $900 worth of gifts. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's $30 per resident. Yep. Twelve hundred dollars. Can I ask why this isn't just in one line? Because she didn't have enough money in one line. Thank you for the indulgence, Mr. Chairman. Certainly. President Smith, anything else? 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm just looking at the personnel sheets here. Is it look? Is it accurate to say you have 12 vacancies in the nursing department? Is that a, roughly accurate? Correct, but like I said, we use it may say vacant, but we're using per diems to fill that, so it's not it's right. vacant from a full time person, right. but it's not really vacant. Follow up. Yes. So I, the per diem rate is much higher. In other words, a full time employee, you got pension at 14 percent, you got all the FICA payroll taxes, but I would imagine the per diem rate eats up all those equivalent costs. Mm -hmm to a full-time employee, yes. so it's yes. almost a one-for-one one probably? They do or? get paid, yes. Yeah. As long as we're not using agency staff. Right. Right. Agency staff is? Three times, probably. Yeah, three, three times what the average mm -hmm. would be. Okay. We can fix it today if you want. I don't want to come back. Okay. I'd rather do that. I'm completely agree. Okay. Question to the chairman. Uh, Chairman Avalani was mm -hmm. where we were going to go with this and whether we are going to suggest or ask more questions for more cuts to try and bring this discussion full circle so we can get back to uh, the delegation with, with the number here. His indication, and, and I ask the same of you, Representative, is that we try and complete our business if we can today. Yes. Okay. Representative Avalani. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the um, reductions uh, brought forward by the um, Nursing Home Business Administrator and the Director. And the total of $67,885.03 and all corresponding lines which will be adjusted prior to our next meeting. Okay. If I could just ask a question before I call for a, well, a second. I'll make a second. Okay. Second's, second's been made by uh, Smith. Um, this this item here on the relocation, are you going to handle that? You, you're going to leave that in there also? I will. I think that that is a discussion to be had with the commissioners prior to us adjusting it in the budget. Okay. So the motion, as I understand, is to reduce, um, reduce the uh, nursing or the budget as presented to us by $67,885.03. It's been moved and seconded. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The, uh, it passes unanimously. I will tell you I was expecting more um, in cost savings. I would agree. I have great hope for that. Yep. Uh, is there any any other at this point in time? I think we can make adjustments at the full delegation if needed. Okay. All right. Anything else? Um, any other business? Representative Smith, you want to discuss at this time? Nothing at this time. Representative Avalani? I am good for right now. Uh, revenues? Okay, would be our last thing, and we should probably ask Commissioner Platts if he has anything he wants to discuss with us. Uh, no, not right now. Okay, will that be in the future? Sure, we can discuss things in the future. Uh, do you have something specific in mind? Uh, no, I don't have something specific in mind. I was just wondering if you did. No, no. Thank you. I just have a quick question. Mm -hmm. yes, you said you guys all voted on the reduction, but that includes Bob's real cap reallocation. And we're doing that, so that will go into somebody else's budget. I had asked that question. I think we're going to have to have a discussion. Okay, so that Delegation we're not discussion on that, am I right? Um, it would be the commissioners would have to uh, weigh in on this. Commissioner Plass, did you hear the reduction cost of moving Bob's, some of Bob's back into the administrative line? Uh, yeah, that would just be shifting the cost. I completely agree. Um, it, wouldn't, it would not reduce anything. Right? That is correct. 
so that bottom line for the reduction of sixty-seven thousand. If, if I'm not doing Bob's portion, then it's not sixty-seven thousand. So I guess that was my question as to what. That was mine also. So that oh. that that number should be readjusted. Is that difference uh, twenty-two thousand that you showed there? Yep, twenty-two zero seven zero. So, so we'd need to remove that from the sixty-seven thousand eight eighty-five zero three. And that would give us a new number of 22. 45, 8, 15, 03. Again, 40. 45, 8, 15, 03. So we should pull the motion and make a new. Mr. Chairman, I move we reconsider our last motion. All right. And. For example, will you remove your second? Yes, I do. Okay, so we will reconsider that, and we will now offer a new motion. Yeah, it, you know, we can we, we consider it because we already voted on it. Okay, so if you're in favor of reconsideration, you signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, so we have we have voted to reconsider our earlier motion of 678503. Mr. Chairman, I now move 4581503. Chairman Avalani moves 4581603. 503. 50, I'm sorry. That's okay. I second that. Second it. Discussion? Can I repeat that? 45815. 03, but we don't do the pennies. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, um, with seeing no further discussion, if you're in favor of the motion, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Um, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is an actual decrease of 45000 in the actual nursing home budget. Can we make sure all the corresponding lines are changed prior to our next meeting? Ms. Siemens? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do we have current revenue numbers? What is this? That's the positions. That's what I was just referencing with the 12 nursing positions. Outstanding. The um, what does yes no mean on the first column? On the wages, all of oh, the positions. I'm like well, I'm looking at <laughs> revenue over here. Yeah. The first oh, column. The A union, union or not union. That. I was just asking what this column okay, was. Okay, thank yeah. you. Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, add all the admin. Could we go back to the positions, please, Mr. Chairman? Yes. <laughs> yes, none of them are union positions. Yep, and where? Okay, so vacant means vacant position. I get confused with the yes, yes, it's filled or no, it's filled. Oh, in the first no, column. that's for union because if they have separate raises, then I have separate formulas up top for whether right. union or not. Completely understand. Have the uh, commissioners seen this list? I emailed it to Commissioner Flash. Okay. Is that the way it's Yes. I have it. Did 
Did you have a comment, Representative? Go get your book. You're missing something. No, I, 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 I'll, I'll steal Representative McConkie's. Yes. Yeah. Don't go crazy. I need the current, the current nursing home presentation for expenses. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Please. The admin line for which is 21, 21, 21, All right, no, that one's good. Yes, Representative Lang. Oh, excuse me, Representative Smith. Can I ask a question regarding under the Recreation Department, the Rec Aid, mm -hmm. the one that's vacant? That is a part-time position. I see no retirement. Yes. Allocated. There's, there's an hour. If you look in the, mm -hmm. I think it's the third column over. It tells you how many hours per week. Okay, right. It's 32. So anything under 35. How necessary is that position to be filled? Uh. <coughs> Especially right now, it's absolutely critical um, because where we are in the midst of COVID, um, a lot of our activities being done on the units and they're dividing up and going to different units on their own and spending their days there. Um, when summertime comes, it's going to be critical as well because any outings and things like that require more staffing to be able to go out in the community and do things as far as, um, you know, out driving with the vehicle and with the, with the residents. So, it's a position that we need to get filled right off. How long has that been vacant for, roughly? Well, she, didn't wow. she have someone and then someone yes. left? So it's yes, and then we it was filled and then <laughs> they left again. The person left. Right. So it's so. been off and on. Mm -hmm. So there's no, no big chunk of time it's, that's yeah, been vacant. Recent. Again. And I know she. I think she's got someone else in the works. She, she was interviewing someone the other day. So yes. Is Mr. Chair? Yes, go right ahead, yeah. Commissioner. Bye. I'd like to. I'd kind of like to comment on on something that was just said about uh, keeping people on the units and separating them. That is probably our single most effective method for uh, protecting against COVID, the spread of COVID, the separation. You know, we track, but we keep we maintain separation, and that's been very effective. Thank you. So I, I'm going to follow up there. So the vacant position, um, you talk about summertime being uh, uh, getting the residents out of here under normal conditions is a great thing for everybody's attitude and make them smile and connect with the world. The, your, your position, your position that's been vacant there, and that is... Um, that is a part-time position, it's 32-hour position. Mm -hmm. You're operating at nearly 100% capacity. Has that position been vacant for six months over the winter months? No. no. Is it, so it's a matter of just a couple months? I'd say two right. months. Yes. Probably total altogether. Right. 
filled up. I mean, people usually apply for those ones. It's easier for them to come in as a record. Okay. Um, Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. I don't get to have this kind of time sitting in this chair at the delegation. I understand. That's why I guess I'm over here. <laughs> um, so, we have, um, we have a director. And assistant director. We have one, two, three, four, five, six other people that act in a aid capacity. So a department of eight people. So when we look at we look at eight over the course of seven days a week, uh, does that give us an average of a couple rec aids on the floor a day, or is it less than that? A couple rec aids on the floor a day. It is there is at least typically three to four rec aids on the floor a day. And their function is recreation. Absolutely. I have a degree in it, so I'm not probing here. So I'm not an anti rec person. <laughs> Probe <laughs> away. Yeah. I'm trying to get a feel for staffing this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they try to have one in each pod, right? Right, it's and one right. each one of the the units that they had once in there, and then especially during like COVID right now, they'll run activities from from that each unit on their own, or if they get together for a large one, it would take many people. Like our bingo is like the hottest thing around, right. even though it's a dollar a game, it's a hot thing and don't mess with it, but it requ requires quite a few people to get the residents there, to get them back, to get them in the room to run the activity. Some that are left on the unit, they stay behind and work with them on different activities. Um, our recreation department is amazing, and they do wonderful things and have actually been the backbone of keeping a lot of people sane over the course of COVID. The, the person that, um, there's also a, you have in here somewhere, you folks have a, a van that you purchased for that transport. Mm -hmm. And that person that's doing the driving comes from where in the budget? So it would be one of these aid people or a director or whatever. Yes, Mr. Under the admin, you you presented the cut of the one part-time position. Yes. The other vacant position, is that being currently filled? We are um, currently looking to fill that position because that would be someone who would be instrumental in working with our supply person um, to help implement the cost savings of the over-the-counter medication and doing some of the... Um, general supply work around the facility as well. That's been vacant for how long? Uh, I don't know. A while. A while. Like a year, a whole budget cycle or Yeah, it's been it's been vacant. We have had it in there. Um, we obviously didn't hire anybody extra next year and we were implementing through McKesson the 
the barcode system. We want to right. implement that. So that position was left in there because once we do that, we'll have extra hands for that. Hopefully have more of a supply room storage set up so someone will be maintaining that. Thank you. And if I could, Paula, do you have room in your in your facility to do that? Meaning the main building, or is that would end up being a function of the annex? Some of that will be in the annex. If we can have a central storage in the annex. As it is right yeah. now in our building, uh, storage is at a premium, and our um, purchasing person actually has places all over the building that he's had to store it in. And sometimes that's not very convenient, but he also has had to utilize uh, the annex uh, for some things as well. And I believe that if we expand that, he would probably have to continue to do so. Okay. You there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Could we look at the LNA line in nursing? Budget? Uh, in the little packet we just got. There's eight vacant positions. Just looking at the full time ones, not the part time one. LNAs? LNAs, yep. Yeah. Just looking at that. I'm not looking at any other department just yet. But again, they're not really vacant. Why not? Because we use per diems, we have to have staffing. So we fill in with per diems. Do we have a per diem line? Because that's what I was trying to look for. No, we do not. We've never had a per diem line. I thought we I thought we had one a number of years ago and we combined it. We combined the L and A's and the M and A's and the supervisors and the charges. So this set the these have been filled by per diems? Yes. So you've expended some of these funds already? Correct. Yes. A lot of those funds already. A significant portion of those funds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And the LNAs are a union or non union position? Union. It's union as a one. Okay. Everyone in nursing, but the nursing supervisors and the uh, the nursing um, secretary line, which is health information management and the scheduler, they're non-union. But everybody else, LNAs, MNAs, charge nurses, they're all union. Thank you. And seeing as per DMs only use an hourly rate, would there be savings in other lines if we're not using the rest of the benefits? I.e., retirement, retirement yes. since yes. it's a since it has gone up quite drastically over the last couple of years. Exactly. Yes. So yes, unless we fill them with a regular full-time person, which is obviously always our hope that we get regular full-time staff. Right, but we could, seeing as we're not paying that for a full year, for a full year yes. we could we could look at that as another area of potential savings. Or, uh, sorry, what yes, for example. Yes. The per diem rate, though, is much higher than the hourly rate of a regular employee, which somewhat absorbs their retirement and payroll. Taxes, Some of it correct, yeah. It's, they're all budgeted at 17. I think our per diems are right around 17 now. Yes. Not a little, depending on their years of service. I mean, and if you look, we've, we spent all our LNA money last year and we had just as many vacant positions, so I can't imagine us not spending it all again this year. Right. You spent most of that line last year. I think it's overspending. Right. Yeah. So. And that's even that's even expending the money that you would hope they would be full time employees and paying retirement. We need that extra money right. to do that. Let's see what we did with our retirement. Yeah. yeah.
even our retirement, we only had 3,700 left and we overspent our LNA line. So it's eating up. Mm -hmm. You know, sure, there was transfers in here. Like there was a 40,000 print move here, probably okay. to cover salaries. So. Okay, I better understand that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to dietary. And dietary is also a union position. Most of them, yes. Okay. I'm looking I'm looking to your two vacant spots. When we've been vacant, have we had to bring in somebody to cover those positions? Yeah, he'll um, do some of his part-timers, give them additional hours to cover any open shifts that he has. Usually with most departments, they need to have someone else come in to cover their spot. Um, the LNAs, I mean, dietary, obviously not so much any administrative staff, but any other department, if there's a someone calls out or there's a vacancy, they're picking up the people with the part-time to help cover those open spots. No, I understand that, but I'm talking about dietary, mm -hmm. which is running a kitchen. Right. The positions I'm looking at. Yeah, and they would do the same thing. If he had a vacant spot and needed, he would probably ask one of his part-timers to work additional hours to help fill in, to pick up the slack in his department. Representative Smith. So the vacancies primarily occurred this past year during COVID, when your kitchen was mostly shut down. Right? And they have vacancies off and on anyway. We have a lot of high schoolers that come and go, or people that get out of high school, they you know pick up the forty hours and then they move on as they get older. So Tran you know, transient jobs. Yeah. yeah, a lot of departments have vacant positions mm -hmm. off and on because mm -hmm. of just the way turns over turnover is. Right. Yeah, those departments don't always keep full staff. But even due to COVID, they still are even more so like delivering more to the units, mm -hmm. doing more things, having to, you know, still work as we would if we were not in such a COVID situation. Right. So it's pretty equal. Well, once again, I'm not disparaging the group, no. but if you, but if you're producing 30% less product, I don't know what your percentage is, but your, your revenue is so far down. There has to be a point that we just, and it's, it's water over the dam at this point, but there certainly had to be opportunities there that there, there should have been a belt tightening, in my opinion. And if you had a vacancy, I don't, I don't know where it is, but I, I, I can fully understand LNAs, I can fully understand nurses, administrative staff, and everything else. If I may, um, one of the things that was the most challenging during COVID is that we had so many people that had been exposed or been out due to COVID, and I believe that dietary and housekeeping has been our greatest um, departments that have felt that pain. And so working with a full staff in the dietary during COVID has probably been non-existent, including our own director was out for several weeks yeah. with COVID. Um, and so some people had to step up and fill in his shoes while he was out as well. So we had a lot of people that were out at different points in time with dietary and people have stepped in and had to pick up that slack. So um, dietary and housekeeping saw the majority of our staff being out with COVID. Okay. Representative, anything else? No. We can move on to uh, 
unless you want to make some reductions, if, unless they want to bring forward some more reductions in those areas that we just discussed. I'm comfortable. I think we could have adjusted last time. Okay. Okay, revenue. Revenue. Do you see do you see any new increases there? Um, we were looking at the pro share mm -hmm. and the bed tax. Yes, yes, we wanted to swap move some money around for there so we're gonna decrease the pro share, correct? I would like to make sure that the pro share is limited to what we have received in twenty one. So you want me to do the one point one nine five. And then we can split the difference on the bed tax from what we received in twenty one and twenty. We got fifteen one point five and nineteen. We got one point nine in twenty one and 1.4 and 20, which is a bit different. All right, so you're looking? I'm looking at 1.5 or 1 1.6. An increase of that, right? To fill that gap, yeah. Okay. But not to exceed, I mean, we just do flat numbers, 1.2 million for okay. pro share. I don't want to do all the small numbers. And same thing with the bed tax, if you just want to do 1.6 or 1.5 and a half. As long as you are comfortable with that, I do not want to make the same mistake that we did last year. Correct. So, which is why we were searching for additional savings so we would be able to keep the revenue at a reasonable number. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do you need a motion to make that change? So moved, Mr. Chairman. I'll second. Okay. Moved by Representative Albalani, seconded by Representative Smith. Uh, any further questions? Do you guys have a number you're comfortable with for the bed tax uh, pro share? Yeah. Oh, I thought. We need the number. You got one one oh, five five, or you want to do one point six? I think um, one point five. I would feel more comfortable with. I know, I know you're comfortable, but we're not, we're not touching the other one. Right. So, so any bonus in that pro share will be a bonus. You mean in the quick? Oh, and the yeah, because if we get more for pro share, right? right. Which we should be able to cover, recover some no, costs because you're redoing 2020 cost reporting. Cost reporting. Yeah, that's already done. Okay, and what is the what does it look like? Um, I know, well, it's done with our cost report. It's now they're going to do a field audit on it. Mm -hmm. field audit. So once that's done, I guess I have a better idea. I mean, I know she completed the regular audit through Medicaid, but now they're going to do the field audit, which is every five years. Right. Um, they do a field audit. So she's working on that right now. So well, well, the field audit usually doesn't reveal much more. Yeah, I don't or know. less. I will ask her where she's come in, where Don's come in. Um, Tomorrow, I'm sure I'll talk about tomorrow at some point. Yep, and then we already have the established percentages that were done in the budget for 20. For 20. 20. So we should have a solid number for that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So if we could, though, let's, before we vote, just repeat the motion we done on Melissa here. 1.2 million for pro share and 1.55 for. 1.550. Yeah. I, I, I. He wants the extra. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to give it to him. I yeah. know it's not worth it. Because I'm excited. I know it's coming. I know it's coming. Well, the 1.2 million was pro share? Yes. yes. Okay. And the 1.55. One... Thank you. You're welcome. 1.550 is yep. the bed tax. Bed tax. 
that puts us squarely between 2019 numbers and 2020 actual numbers, and 2021 is. Do you have that, Melissa? Uh, I'm sorry. Commissioner? Yes, Commissioner. Is that an overall decrease then in, in those two lines combined? It is a decrease in one and a slight increase in another. And is it an overall decrease then in the combined lines? From what we got last year, yes. Right. Yes. So, what, from from what, what was in the commissioner's budget? Is there an, are you is that an overall decrease in revenue then? I'm not, I haven't done the math yet. I don't have it in front of you. I don't have your updated revenue because I don't have my book. Reduction. It's a slight reduction. Okay. A slight being reduction. Uh, yes, Rep, uh, Commissioner Plash. We have uh, decided to not repeat last year. I think that's a good idea. I think I'm it's a great you. idea. <laughs> it's a dry May I ask you another question? Please. And, and uh, this, D, this one's directed to you. Would would it be uh, I don't, would it be prudent uh, and sensible to look at doing another increase midway through the year in the in the private pay rate because of uh, the huge rise in the cost of living since we we computed that last increase we're looking at we're looking at some big increases in energy and food costs and salaries right uh, yeah. I'm not opposed to it. That would be a commissioner's decision. That would be it. Yeah. Yes, and I, I would, personally, I would support that. Yeah, yeah and we I didn't. think we could, I think I had looked at it for the upcoming, the next budget session, but I think that there's enough evidence that the prices and the cost of everything has gone up that warrants it. So even yeah. though we did a significant increase with the $40, I don't think that another jump, not necessarily as large um, would be appropriate. Yeah. Maybe like June. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. Okay, good. All right. Music to my ears. Yeah. yeah. That's, unfortunately, it's going to be that for every resident, anyways, whether you're here or and residing. It, right. It'll be county. Right. Across the board. So, with right. that, with that, do we have updated? We'll get an updated presentation to bring to the delegation, delegation. with the changes we did today. Yes, I will get the figures over. Also, you can do a note on Michelle for the meeting. And make sure they're reviewed by subcommittee column. We haven't been doing that. We haven't been putting them to ACS until the budgets are done. Done. Right. So um, I'll work with the CFO and yeah. call out and make sure everybody's on the same page. Make sure. I'll do what my, my Excel spreadsheets with the new numbers and then I'll send them over and, and email them home. You could tick off, highlight, or show the changes. Mm -hmm. Be appreciated. Yeah, the changes, the adjustments, and if you find anything else you'd like to. There just might be something. There might be something you guys can find without going into any more detail. Okay. I know. I know. If I might, would this be for Friday or? That's our next meeting. Um, could be. Talking now to the chairman of the full delegation. Could be. Could be. It could be Friday if we can you pull enough people together. You asked everyone to keep Friday open. I um, did. So if we can get that today's Tuesday. Wednesday, uh, <laughs> it might be a little tight, but how, how quick can you get it done, Paula? I'll have them done tomorrow before noon. Okay. We used to bar high before noon. I would, I would have them done tonight, but that's, you know, oh, wow. we, got, we got another I hour. Have something to do. Yeah. Right? It's almost <laughs> 5 o'clock. I mean, it's only 4. And, so. you, and you're planning on sleeping some. I'd like to, yes. Yes. Okay. I do have a light outside the county. Little wow. one. Not very much right now, but. We should, we should probably hold right there. <laughs> you you do, and you always have done a wonderful job. Yep. Yeah, we've never had any. She's a great asset. Yes, she certainly is. When it comes to numbers from the nursing home, 
and we want to continue on that path. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. So with that, I believe our charge is done for the day. Done for the day. We've made our adjustments. We're waiting on the final numbers. Uh, if you'd like to meet a few minutes before our delegation meeting to accept them. Certainly. We certainly could do that. Okay. Yes. Two o'clock again Friday is the time? Yep. We can meet at one, one thirty. One thirty. You want to put that on your calendar, Mr. Chairman? Or I can certainly put that on my calendar and, and Melissa will put that on my calendar okay. as well. Sounds good. I just had three o'clock in my head. Yeah. And there was no there was nothing that was gonna change that. Yeah. <laughs> so would you like to recess today and reconvene? If we if we could do that. on Friday? Thank you. Okay. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. And in the meantime, on Thursday, we get an answer or some input from the commissioners on moving part of the maintenance director's salary into the admin building? We took that out. I know you took it out. So that would just come to the full delegation? No, we just took it out. We, did, we, we, we reduced it. We moved it out of there. Okay. Thank yeah, you. That's going to make a difference in the bottom line. So. Yeah. No, it'll be, um, it'll be a discussion for the next budget. Okay. Thank you for that. Yep. Yep. We don't need to we don't need to muddy that water because no. I think we've already done that part I, of the budget. I had to step out of the yes. room to see some staff before everybody left. Um, Gift did cards. You, what, what we did, you, did you um, do the capital for the dining? I think they did capital at the last meeting. Is what I thought that's what Bob said that capital was done. I don't know. Capital I for your main capital, not for dietary. Not for dietary. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah we left that because we were going to hear that today. Right. All right. Sorry about that. Yep, yep, that's fine. So Thank let's you. go there. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. You're welcome. I still have not have I'm just going to leave it up here. That's the problem. Well, no, I'm, there's notes in it that people oh. probably shouldn't see. Okay. All right. That's this is this is small. It was a small number. It wasn't yeah. the yellow, the light yellow top sheet we had. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's not in this one. It's in the other. Twenty thousand. It's in the other. Where does it show up? It's in our main. It's in our main. Spot. Main budget. Um, under no. capital. Towards, towards the, the back. Towards the back. Ninety-four hundred. MVC dietary twenty nine thousand four oh six. Commissioners proposed twenty thousand. Twenty thousand, yeah. And he did have a few things. He had um, a cooler for drinks for the cafe, a new one of those. Then he was asking for universal racks and a meat slicer. I believe what he wants to do is get instead of the pan holding cabinet rack that he wanted. He wants to do a steamer because that steamer has been breaking down a lot and he's had spent a lot of repairs. So he was going to push one of these off and get the steamer instead. So he's going to, but still asking for the same amount still of money. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. So the 8900 for the steamer. Yeah. yeah. And then 70, 7100 for the drink. And then another. So we want to move under. Yeah. Under uh, capital, capital expenditures, 093, uh, MBC dietary commissioner's proposed budget of $20,000. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Oh, second. second. 
moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Any discussion? Signify by saying aye. 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 And then can we have a tiny bit of discussion? Yes. Um, the refrigerator is out front. Um, why, why do we not have a Coke or Pepsi coming in doing all that for us when we're having to buy our own? I think they did at one point until COVID, and then they started. Then we like got really slim on drinks. Like we, I think we just didn't really have much at all. And I think he's getting back into. So I'm assuming somebody will be coming back in to fill those. That's what we used to do. I'm not really sure what his process was now, but no, he wants to replace one of the refrigerators. Right, self one of the self -service. Right. So I'm a yeah. So maybe we're not. Maybe he's just going to fill them himself. Maybe it was cheaper for us to fill it himself. I don't know. I would have to ask Chris that question. I really don't. No, not to fill it. He's going to want us to replace one, right? Right. Why isn't Coke or Pepsi stepping up and replacing oh, it for us? Because I don't know if they come in anymore. Of course they do. But to fill it was what I'm saying. I no, don't, they should I, be able to supply refrigeration for us. Oh. He's saying the case we'll that has a Pepsi case. Yeah, we'll yeah. have to, yeah, because yeah. yeah. we'll 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 haven't. Sure. Right. Especially an open air one as well, because they do service those and well as supply those to larger places, and especially if you're buying direct from Coke or Pepsi, one of them should step up to the plate. I can ask Chris, because yeah. I honestly have yeah. no idea what his so Pepsi deal is with them. Yeah, somebody, because I don't see Pepsi or Coke, I see White Mountain Beverage, so um, if Pepsi or Coke has a better deal, can supply refrigeration and whatnot, and buying directly from them would probably be something that, well, one, would provide savings, mm -hmm. and two, we wouldn't be shelling out $10,000 for a fridge. That's what they are right now for those open airs. Yeah, good one. one yeah, a good, yeah, a, a good decent one. one. So, yeah, I yeah. can ask them. I don't really know what the. Which might free him up for something else. Which would free up, exactly, would free up a little bit money for him to do something else. I will reach out to him and get that answer. Yeah, because that way you're not, you don't need to oh, hold, you don't need to wait on that. It's something that they could provide. They'll wheel it in the door, set it up, and it's good to go. Because I know you guys do both Coke and Pepsi, so. Right. Maybe no, it's... we don't do both. No? No, it's a surprise. Well, it all depends how you look at it. Right. <laughs> all right. So, so with that, we've now approved the capital also. So with that, I will move to uh, recess until we pulled the time certain. Was it 1.30 or 1.30 1 uh, temp this coming Friday? Yep. All right. Always a pleasure, Mr. Chairman. Always to be in the company of these people. I agree. Certainly appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Four right. Thank you. We, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. We are recessed. Yep. I know.